will be strong and they won't fall away, Lord, and begin to doubt you, but they'll remember what the Word of God says. And they'll keep the Word of God in their minds and in their hearts, Lord. And I pray that they fasten and they hold to the Word of God, Father. I pray that even myself, I grab onto the word and I never leave it. I never forsake it just as he promised. He will never leave me and never forsake me. Lord. Growing is happening in this place. I can see it. We are growing. You're not the same Christian you were years ago. You're not the same. I know you're not. Nor am I. I'm not the same pastor six years ago. We're growing year by, there ye by. Thank you, Father. I honor you today, Lord. As IBC puts you first, in the highest place. In Jesus' name I pray. We all say, Amen. 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 We all say, Amen. Amen. In other words, let it, let it be done. Amen. Let it be done according to the word of God. Hallelujah. Oh, Father, I thank you. All right. We started out last week uh, on a new little series here, and it has to do with worship. And I spoke about Abraham, where Abraham went up to sacrifice Isaac, and he called it worship. So we understood that worship is a sacrifice, amen? Today, if you were here early enough in prayer, I gave some instructions, and man, we followed those instructions, and it just, I mean, the glory of the Lord just hit. I don't know if uh, those of you that were here, the moment I gave the step one, step two, and step three, uh, I said, this is what we're going to do today, and there was an immediate presence of the Lord, like the Lord saying, yes, 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 that's it, that's it. And it's something that I, as I've learned, I've learned young in the ministry of worship, in the ministry of talking about God, praising God, and even doing it with song, amen? Even, even singing. Uh, worship is not only singing. Worship is a piece, a singing is a piece of worship, but worship has much more depth to it in understanding. And so I've, something I've learned about worship is, uh, Jesus is looking for real worshipers. Jesus is looking for real worshipers. It's something that he's looking for. It's something that he delights in. That means, and what this tells me, is that there is probably a lack of true worshipers. If Jesus had to put something in the word of God that will never, it, it'll never cease, it'll never stop. Thank you, man. It'll never stop. We can always say that there's probably always going to be an attack from the enemy that will create a shortage of true worshipers. Okay? A shortage of true worshipers. In other words, I believe, I believe as the days come near to Jesus, there will be a, a separation and people won't understand what worship is. They'll think worship is the glamour and the lights and the and that that's not all it has that those things you see because someone has a core something inside of them and when you see me lift my hands and you see me worship you see my wife just just uh at, at, at the top of her lungs it, the letting the word of god come out it's because there's a core element that we've learned to let reside inside of us I know of many, many, many churches that don't allow that to come out. They want it to stay conservative. Let's not have an outburst. Let's not have an outburst or you'll have some ushers come in and take you out. You know? And we don't want to have too much of that other stuff because it's going to get out of control. And we don't want it to get out of control. We want to make sure and stick to the bulletin. We want to stick to the... To, to what we, we said we were going to do. And although there are times for a schedule, there are times to let the Holy Spirit do what he needs to do. And you see, years ago, I grew up in a church. I grew up in a very conservative style of ministry. 
where there wasn't really much raising of hands, not too much instruments. Uh, it was a very low key, only hymns. We only sang hymns. And although the word of God said, worship the Lord in songs, hymns, and spiritual songs. So it says songs, hymns, and spiritual songs. So the Bible says there's three types of songs. There are songs, there are hymnals, and there are spiritual songs. Spiritual songs you have to learn to develop because that means you have a true relationship. I believe hymnals are a good way to start. I love the hymns. I love listening to the old hymns. Uh, they really have the message of Jesus Christ in them. But then I got to understand that outside of the hymnals, there are songs that we sing that burst out in praise and, and, and worship. Something that will allow a little bit more instruments and the lyres and the strings and the drums to apply. And, and, and then there is spiritual songs. And I love the way it puts spiritual songs on the end because that takes a relationship. I know that many of you cannot do a spiritual song. I couldn't when I first started. I was like, well, I, I can't really sing. I don't know exactly how to do this. And some of you may say, oh, pastor, you got a gift or whatever. No, this wasn't always. You develop gifts. You develop talents. You have to develop them. Just because I knew how to, a, a, a raw element of singing doesn't mean that I leave it alone just like that. I have to develop the singing. Those people that, that, uh, that are, are playing professionally in their music and the singing that they do, they didn't just get there like that. Hours of developing. My first instrument that I learned to play was the drums. And could you imagine uh, the noise in the house? Because hours I developed it. I didn't just sit on it and thought I knew how to play just because I knew how to play. I see that a lot now. I look at instrumentals, they looking at and they're playing, and I'm looking at them like, woo, you can't play, man. How long have you been playing? Oh, I've been doing this for 20 years. Oof. You know what that means? You just didn't practice. You think you're already there. You think you're already there. You think you're already at it. You think you've already developed it, and you're working hard at it. And what happens is when you got someone else who has developed the, the gift a little bit better than you, you start to realize, oh, you know, they do a little bit better than me. And then what do we do? We come up with this false doctrine. Well, I guess that's just not my talent. No, 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 no. You're lazy. Yeah, that's all. Thank you, brother. That's it all. It's laziness. Amen. We have to develop worship. We have to develop. It's something that you have to come into. You see, here in the latter, the, these latter days, we began to see churches come out and begin to have music and begin to have, put instruments in the church. And, and before you know it, people begin to start adding uh, this little thing here, you know. And all of a sudden, you had some people, man, whoo, this is, uh, and all of a sudden, you have people like Sister Kimmy, well, just, uh, man, do a little turn. Oh, a turn. A turn. We saw a turn. And, and, and in the church that is very conservative, well, you see a turn, that's it. Something, but if you're not used to it, that's already starting something different. Because that means celebration. I mean, I could only imagine that conservative place where David was at and the tabernacle that it was at. And it was very conservative. You're talking about a conservative place. If you had any order, it was the tabernacle. The tabernacle had order. And then all of a sudden you have David that was bringing the Ark of the Covenant into his, into his grounds. He hadn't developed the temple yet, but he was bringing it back to Israel. What did he do? It said he started to dance crazy. In other words, he let loose. He didn't care. Because there was an overflow of something inside of him. There was an overflow of some kind of revelation that he had that God is now in my house. Amen. It's no longer that I'm talking about God. It's no longer that we, we reverence God. But now I understand who he is now. And when you know who he is, that's when you begin to go in a deeper place of revelation, of raising hands, because I know my God, you know, I know my God. 
Yeah, but Pastor Tim, uh, I know my God. I know my God. I know my God. I know what he can do. I know what he's done. I know who he is. He never changes. Yesterday, today, and forever, he'll never change. And I can stand on that. I can stand on that. And what does it do? It just does what it's doing right now. An overflow of hallelujah comes out. Amen. But in the middle of that, if in the middle of that, I get that recognition and I'm beginning to understand. And all of a sudden, hey, 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 man, don't get too crazy now. Don't get out there too much. Hold on. And then we do this thing. Am I the only one? Oh, Lord, I'm the only one standing up. You understand? You got to get to a place where that doesn't matter anymore. Worship is changed in the church. Worship is changed. It wasn't like what it used to be. We've seen it go into a different dynamic. But now I'm beginning to see, you know, we do everything in error. You know that? Every time we, we grab on something, we got a revelation of something. Then what do we do? We start taking off. And before you know, we off in la-la land again. But what started out was a good thing, bringing the instruments into the church about 20 years ago, uh, 25 years ago, bringing the instruments into the church, bringing the singing, bring the tambourine in for Lord's sake, you know, bring the tambourine, bring the clapping in, you know, raise up the voices a little bit. Let's just not stand there, oh, you know, but let's actually bring an expression. I don't know about you, but when I see my parents and I ain't seen them for a long time, hey, hey, you know, you come out, you've seen a daddy or you've seen your abuelito or your grandfather, you ain't seen him in a while, abuelito, hey, you know, and you, and you hug them and hey, and then some people that you really haven't seen and you ain't seen for a long time since you were little and then you look at them and they've grown and you matured and what do you do? You cry and you hug and you bring close and you hug. I haven't seen you in so long. It's expressions. But for some reason, we want to limit that when it comes to the Father. We want to limit that. Why? Why is that? I don't know how I would feel if all of a sudden I hadn't seen my son for, for a long time. And all of a sudden he turns and says, Lord, I'm coming back to you, Dad. And all right, I'm coming. And he comes and he goes, oh, oh. Man, boy, get over here. Hold, hold on, Dad. Man, get over here. What's wrong? I ain't seen you in a long time. Stop acting proper. And why are you dressed like that? And why are you acting like that? Talk to me like your daddy. You understand? Why are you doing that? What is, what is this? Some church service? <laughs> what is this? A church service? Come talk to me. Hug on me. Love on me. I want to love on you. Amen? We have to understand this. See, we've been growing into that. But now we have gone a little bit too far in some of these churches. And we turn to praise and worship into a performance. Golly. You've been there, haven't you? Very scheduled. Very timed. You start and you stop, right? Huh? A production, right? That's what they do. And they do it into a production because these people, they can't last more than 20 minutes. And so we're going to give them 20 minutes of worship. If not, they ain't going to come back to church anymore. And so they start tending to the people. And so and that's, that's a terrible thing when you start tending the word to the people. Okay? It's a terrible thing. The word has to stay separated. Whether we like it or not. Whether something we like in it or not, that's our heart and we got to deal with that. But the word of God never changes. Amen? But we're starting to see worship go into a little bit different dynamic where it's a little bit more of performance. And now there's a performance wise and all those that were like the conservative in the beginning, they say, see, see, look what you turned into it. Well, it went a little bit too far. But really, there are some churches now that are starting to rein it back in and say, you know what? We need to bring back the element of prayer in our worship. Amen. We got to bring back the element of prayer and the element of, 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 of worship where we start not just thanking God for what he's done, but for who he is. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. So now standing and singing, lifting hands, dancing instruments have now been put into our church. And what it does, it helps bring the glory of God. I want to show you a real quick scripture just to start out with. This is 1 Kings 8, 10 and 11. 1 Kings 8, 10, and 11. Look what it says here. And it came to pass when the priests were come out of the holy place. So that means they weren't in the place where only God resided. Remember, the holy holy was only for the priests. 
But look what it says. A different dynamic happened. The spirit didn't just want to stay in the Holy of Holies anymore. It says, and it came to pass when the priests were came out of the holy place that the cloud filled the house of the Lord. So you see, God, even in the tabernacle, we could, we could say, well, he only resided in the Holy of Holies. Well, he broke that rule here. He didn't only reside in the Holy of Holies. There was a moment here. Let me tell you what was happening here. Solomon finally got the instruction to build the temple. See, David never was able to build the temple because the Bible said that he was a man of war. A man of war is in, 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 in a conquering mode. We need supplies. We need land. We need people. We need to establish. See, that's a conquering mode. That's almost like an apostolic thing where we conquer, conquer, get land, get people, get, get uh, resources that we need. David, his, in his lifetime, he had gathered up the resources that was necessary to build the temple. But God didn't have him build it. He had his son Solomon do it. So Solomon finally got the word of God and he said, my gosh, I get it now. Remember, this is the man that asked for wisdom. Do you know that he had so much wisdom? It says that he had wisdom of plant life and animal life. Do you know that? It actually says that in the first couple of chapters of Kings, you start reading it. And it says when he asked for wisdom, God gave him wisdom of plant life and animal life. In other words, it's very possible that the genus species and all that stuff that we do now in, in, in science came from this kind of wisdom. He was able to segregate them and put them together. He had understanding about the creation. This is wisdom that was, came on him. Why? Because it was anointing. He was chose to do that. And what he did was he built this temple. And after he built the actual temple, David was in a moving tabernacle since Moses. But now the Lord said, no, I want some foundations. I want a place where my people can come to that will never, never move. And so what happened was he got the instruction and Solomon built the temple. And when he finally built the temple in the exact order that he was supposed to do it, the Lord, it says that the Lord made him a, a wise architect. The Lord all of a sudden gave him his architectural mind that he didn't have before. And then all of a sudden he just had it. There was anointing for it so that he could build this thing correctly. And it says, and it came to pass when the priests were come out of the holy place that the cloud filled the house of the Lord, verse 11, so that the priests could not stand to minister because of the cloud. For the glory of the Lord had filled the house of the Lord. How did they get there? They were all in one accord. This is my desire. They call this, the Bible calls this the Shekinah glory. The glory where all of a sudden the spirit of the Lord fills the room. And forget Nina or, any, or Tim or anybody talking. We all know that he is here. This is the kind of worship we got to get to. That's why I want, we need to get into the basics of praise and worship. We got to get to a place where the spirit of the Lord is aroused and wants to feel himself in the, in the quadrant of this little square here. He doesn't want to limit himself to it, but he wants to fill it with his glory cloud. Sometimes, you know, I've experienced that when it's a heavy movement of the Lord. No more singing. There's just music playing. People are crying. There's a people just on the ground. People are sitting, kneeled over. Worship. You hear the, the sounds of murmuring. You hear murmuring. Anybody ever heard that in a, in, in a, praise, in a worship setting where it's just murmuring? It's not really words. It's not tongues. It's just a murmur. Oh, oh. Oh, oh, wow, it's just a murmur, something coming from the inside. It's an inner musing is what the King James calls it, musings. It's a, it's a worship, uh, an, an intimate, intimate thing, uh, a groan that comes from the inside. Amen. And I don't know if you've ever experienced that, but it's so beautiful because you know that you and your other comrades that are with you have now found themselves dead to themselves 
alive to Christ enough where the Lord says, you know what? There's no carnality in here. I can reside. The carnality has left. There is a place where the Lord sees it and the people of God recognize and they say all flesh has now died. And the presence of the Lord sees it and says, hallelujah, let me, let me come in a little bit more. Let me bring my cloud in a little bit more. Amen. Let me begin to minister to them as they minister to me. This is a deep form of worship. This is a new kind of thing. It's something that the Lord wanted different. He wanted intimacy. I want to show you, David even got a little bit of a revelation in Psalms 150. This is the last Psalms of, of, of the book. Psalms 150, the last Psalms, that's 150 Psalms. So if anything, you can remember that. How many Psalms are there? 150. At least you remember that. Look what the last, this is what he wrapped up. All of the book of Psalms, it wraps up into this one thing. It says, praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in mighty, in his mighty heavens. Verse 2, praise him for his acts of power. Praise him for his surpassing greatness. Praise him with the sounding of the trumpet. Uh-oh, here we go. For all those that don't want instruments. Praise him for the sounding of the trumpet. I don't know about you, but I've never heard a quiet trumpet. Praise him with the harp. The harp is the strings. That's the pianos, the strings, the guitar. That's the harp. Praise him with the lyre. Keep on going. Praise him with tambourine. Well, now we're getting to my instrument pretty close. I don't play a tambourine, but it's like a drum, right? So I'm like, oh, this is getting close. Tambourine's pretty loud. Matter of fact, tambourine can get kind of nauseous if it keeps going. You understand? I mean, whoa, she really going? You know, have you ever had one where the sister was off beat and you're like, man, at least do it in beat, you know? <laughs> That, that stuff's always in my mind. I'm an instrumentalist, you know. It, it's kind of then I'm like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, there we go. There we go. Let's, let's, let's play. Remember, David also then said, let's play skillfully, you know. <laughs> let's play skillfully, you know. But it says, praise him with the tambourine and what? This is Psalms 150. Some of you have never experienced it before. In this room. I'm not judging you. Don't get judged. Don't take yourself a oh, victim. You ain't no victim. You're a victor. You're in victory. You ain't no victim. No victim at all. But the word says in dancing. You know what dancing? Dancing is a little. Ain't no right. Ain't all right. You know what I mean? You know, I like to do the, or the two, the two step, you know, or, or just the, you know, you know, you know, you know what I mean? All right. You know what I mean? Y'all done jumping jacks, yeah. right? It's like a half jumping jack in dancing. There's something about dancing that it says, praise him with dancing. Did you know that this is not an option? You know what? I'm going to tell you something. It's not an option when it's really in you. I mean, after all, Jesus is Lord of the dance. Did you know that? It says that? He's Lord of the dance. Tambourine. So I like this. It's getting in the rhythm section. Thank God because Latinos, we're about the rhythm, right? You know, you know we're rhythm. It says, I got right. We liked the strings. That was good and everything. But now the tambourine, you know, and now the dancing, right? And now we praise him with the strings and the flute. Let's go ahead and add a little bit more. Verse 5. Praise him with the what? With the clash of what? Ah, I love it. Oh, I love it. I love it for everyone out there. Those symbols are too loud. Hallelujah. I know they're loud. The Lord knows they're loud. It's a clashing sound. Praise him with the clash whoosh, of symbols. You see, when you start knowing your, your, your instrument, and, and this is what I'm teaching. I'm trying to teach the, the worship team here. Use your instrument as a tool of worship. That means the instrument that I'm playing brings honor to God. 
That means the very drums that are played, the very guitar that is played, that means if we minister to it with our hearts, focusing on the Lord, giving it to the Father, amen, it honors Him using these tools. It's not just vocals. It's not just praying. But it's involving a, a conglomerate of all little items and tools necessary. The hands even can serve as drums. Hallelujah. The clash of cymbals. Praise Him with, I love this, resounding cymbals. In other words, don't just do it with one hit. Praise Him with a resounding. Huh? I know y'all see me back there. But yeah. I have a very deep understanding of this. So when you see me there, that's the difference between the performer, the singer, and the psalmist. That's the difference. The singer and the, the player, the musician, they know, they understand. Well, this is about where you do it. This is about where you stop. But the psalmist understands when they use their instrument to bring honor to the Lord. When you do that, there's an anointing that falls and comes in agreement and says, yeah, 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 they're doing it in the right heart. I'm here. That's why you don't have to be a technical, uh, technical good musician. All those that say, well, I don't sing, it don't matter, it don't matter, that don't, that don't matter. Well, I don't do this, no, it don't matter, it don't matter. Everyone plays their part in. Everyone plays their part. The clash of the cymbals, praise him with the resounding cymbals. And look what it says in verse 6. Let everything, everything that has breath, that has the breath life in him, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. David got this, didn't he? This is the way he rolls out. Drop the mic. Done with Psalms. You want to wrap up the Psalms in anything? It's... Make noise with your mouth, with your cymbals, and praise God. That's what the Psalms is about. You want to learn to worship the Lord? Read the Psalms. It should lead you to singing. If you're spiritual, and thank God you're in a spiritual church here, after you start reading Psalms, there should be a couple of chapters when you're going to start understanding the song, the spiritual song that can come out in a moment. And you just sing it, you just sing it. You just sing it. It doesn't matter what it is. It, it just comes out. You'll hear me up here. I'll grab on the tune. of. of the, I hear a tune. Man, that's a good little tune right there. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Father. We worship you. There's something about that when you do that. There's something about it. Well, I can't do it like you. Then just choose one note and you do it right there. You just stay right there. We thank you, Lord. Let an inner musing come out of me, Lord. From the belly flow rivers of living water. Living water. Now I'm going to give some volume because now I can sense something. Even right now while I'm just doing it. And there's something about an overflow. Oh, there's something about when a dam can't take it no more. And all of a sudden. <laughs> and it comes down. There's something about that. Amen. What is this? It's an expression. Praise and worship. Praise is an expression. It's the physical and the vocal appreciation. Amen. <laughs> Praise is the physical, the physical. <sighs> and the vocal appreciation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank God for the hallelujah. Oh, that's a part the hallelujah. I love saying it like the hallelujah. Because when you get the hallelujah, it can't come out of you anymore. My wife, she like, hallelujah. <laughs> but, but, but we sing it all, hallelujah. Boy, when that hallelujah comes out, there's power in that word. I'm telling you, when you got the hallelujah in you, that's it. It's done. You're going to hallelujah everywhere. Matter of fact, I, used, I think they used to call us the hallelujahs or something, you know. It's a physical expression. It's an expression of appreciation. When you praise, you're expressing yourself. If you don't know how to express yourself, you haven't entered into praise yet. That's why this morning I said, hey, first, let's, die, let's let ourselves die off. Put yourself on the altar. Get yourself out of the way. 
Because there ain't no way you can start talking about God until you are dead. As long as you're alive, it's hard because you're going to be like, yeah, little, little. oh, I got a little loud, you know. Oh, I see it every day. I see it every Sunday. Oh, could you imagine a church that just don't care about that anymore? Oh, I desire IBC to be there. I desire every one of you. That's why, I'm, that's why, I, that's why I believe the Lord sent you a pastor that know, is a minister in music also. I believe that. I believe that because if, if you're coming here, then that, that's it. The Lord needs you here. That means there's something that needs to come out of you. There's, there's, there's a, a, a relationship with the Holy Ghost that needs to rise up out of you to come out in song, hymns, spiritual song, playing the drums, the resounding of the cymbals. There must be something there if you're here. Amen. Praise is an expression of your appreciation, the physical thing. All right. We call it praise and Worship, right? Worship is the highest form of praise, okay? Worship is going beyond the blessing. Yeah, let that sit just a little bit. Just let that sit just a little bit right there. Worship is going beyond the blessing. How has God blessed you? Don't answer me, just... How has God blessed you? Has God blessed you? Amen. All right. Worship is going beyond that. Huh? Worship, when you get in a spirit of worship, it's no longer about what he did for me. I'm going to say it again. It's about who he is. It's not about anymore what he did. It's not anymore about what I do. That's praise. You know, the Lord even praises you. I mean, you've done things for him too, and, and, and there's praise in that also, you know. Don't get too lofty and big-headed, you know, but, you know, there's an honor that he gives to his children. Man, good job. You did what I said, you know. And there, there's something to that. But when you get into worship, you have passed all the benefits of the friendship and you're looking eye to eye and you're looking at the core of that person and you're saying just for who you are. It's not about what you did for me anymore. We've gone past that relationship. Now it's just about who you are. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, man. I'm giving myself crazy up here. It's about who he is. This is deeper. This takes developing, doesn't it? I mean, you, you could probably tell right now, like, oh, man, I, I need more in this area. I mean, I'm saying it right now. I need more in this area. To understanding and worshiping for who he is. Not and what I've done, but for who he is. He's wonderful. He's everlasting father. He's faith. You see that? He's good. He's perfect. He's slow to anger. See that? See, you're, you're now worshiping him for his nature. Yeah, for who he is. It's his nature. Amen? I'm going to read something to you because this is praise and worship. Amen? Praise is speaking well of. When you praise God, you're speaking well of him. God, why did you allow this? That's not praise. Okay? Got to get past that. It's speaking well of. Praise is when you express admiration. I admire you. Praise is a compliment. You compliment the Father. Praise is commending. I commend you. Praise is to congratulate, to applaud. Praise is when you congratulate Jesus. Hallelujah. I congratulate you. You went to the cross and you did it and said, this is finished. And so we congratulate the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. We congratulate him. Almost like awesome. What a mighty scene right there. Went into the heavens, robbed the enemy of everything he had, and in his tail brought up all Moses and Abraham and all of them. What a, what a moment. 
we congratulate you. What we couldn't do, you accomplished. What I could never do on my own, you did it. I, I applaud you for what you did. You understand? See how that takes you. It takes you, it puts you in a position, amen, of humility. Because you couldn't do what Jesus did. We tried as a human race and we failed. And we failed and we failed and we continue to fail. But what do we do? Us failures got a revelation. There was one that didn't. I'm getting on his side. You other failures can remain failures. I'm going to be a failure with the one that finished. You understand? See, we got to keep that low position. I haven't excelled myself to where Christ, no, 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 no. No, I haven't got myself in equivalency with Jesus. No, 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 I'm a son, but I still got some broken things. One day we will be like him. But right now, no, 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 no. I remain my humble state. I have my confidence in what he did, but not confidence in my doings and what I can do. This is, this is praise. I'm praising him. I'm giving him, I'm congratulating him, I'm applauding him. I, uh, uh, another word to, for praise is to eulogize. Everybody ever done a eulogy? Anybody know what the eulogy is for the funeral? What's the eulogy? When you talk good about the person. Have you ever been to a, have you ever been to a funeral where the eulogy is the hardest thing in the world? Because we all know exactly who that person when he passed away. He was mean. He was a brute. Came to church, but just mean. My gosh, how do you get? Man, anybody ask me to do eulogy for that? Oh, Lord. I'm telling you right now, I've had to do eulogies for people I didn't even know. How do you do that? It's hard, isn't it? But it's easy to eulogize someone who's been good, isn't it? Oh, it's so easy to eulogize somebody. Talk about somebody that, that did their duty. They completed their task, isn't it? Well, we should delight when we eulogize Jesus. Bring the eulogy of his funeral. Talk about what happened. Talk about what he went through. Talk about how none of us do it, only him. You understand? This should be a eulogy about what happened on that cross at the funeral of the flesh of Jesus. Amen? Talk about that. That's what praise is. You talk about the things he did, amen? What he's done for you. Another word is to extol, to worship, to lift up high, to lift up high, to talk good about in a high place. That's praise, when you praise, when you do that, amen? amen. Worship is when you express reverence. I praise when I talk about you, and you'll see me and my wife, we're praising him. But then the room will turn I can sense more of the presence in the room. Have you ever realized when there's more presence, a heaviness comes, and you don't even want to look up no more? And you'll see, you'll see us do this thing because he's here. Do you know that in some countries it's a disrespect to look in the eye to someone who's higher than you? You, you low. You understand? You ever, you ever heard that before? Especially in Asian countries, they, they brought, you bring your eye down. You, you, don't, you don't look, you know, that's almost like a disrespect in some. See, it's kind of like that. When the Lord begins to enter into the room, it's no longer praise anymore, is it? Have you ever experienced that before? When, when a, 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 a tangible presence, and you know what it causes to do? Who? And you know what happens more in the worship? The tears come. And you know what happens more in the worship? The arms, they just not this anymore. Now it becomes this. This is a different sign, isn't it? And a different. And, and then what happens? Oh, you know, you'll see me and my wife every now and then. And okay, what is this? This is different because he's in the room now. And I'm not just going to go, hey, hey, y'all, praise the Lord. Uh-uh, he's in the room now. He's in the room now. He's in the room Matter of fact, he's coming close. My gosh, he's running across me now. He's running across me now. He's running across me. Watch this, guys. Watch this, for all of you can't see. And now he's touching me. He's touching me. 
He's touching me. Do you, do you see what I'm saying? Do you see what I'm saying? No. That's worship. Why? Who he is. Ain't about what he's done anymore. It's about who he is, who he is. Take the mic, Lord. This is your place. This is your place. You understand? This is what the glory cloud happened in 1 Kings. They were all in worship. Hallelujah. Dancing and singing and praising and worshiping and thanking the Lord. And then all of a sudden, the man showed up. When the man shows up, she stop, stop, stop the drums. Stop, stop the drums. Stop the silence, silence. He's here. He's here. Bow down. Bow down, bow down. That's different. That's different. Jesus is looking for true worshipers that understand this concept, not only for what he has done, but for who he is. Amen? A couple of things here. Worship, it's an attitude of the heart. I literally got on the floor right now while I was preaching to you. You ever seen anybody do that? You know, It's a humility. It's an attitude of the heart. I'm letting myself die so you can experience something that is in the life of me and my wife. It's what we do. It's what we do. I'm going to let you in the room to what we look like and what happens. Amen? It's an attitude of the heart. If you don't have this susceptibility... To hit your knees when the presence of the Lord is here, you don't understand. Your attitude of the heart is still a little off. You're still maybe baby Christian. Because what do we do? What happens when we're in a serious moment? A kid don't care. Ah! Right? Right? Children don't know. They don't know nothing about that. You can't be mad at them for that. We did it too. But an adult, a different. Some of us still have a childlike faith for we'll still talk while a holy moment is going. They're still talking, talk about this and that. And hey, let me get you. And we're in a holy moment. Pastor's done laid out on the ground. I've seen it. And there's some that it ain't even stood up yet, still sitting down. And they're still there. Missed it totally. Why? Because it's an attitude of the heart. It's a heart issue. Not having freedom to worship like that for who he is, that's different. Most Christians stay for what he's done. And they kind of stop right there. But when you get actually into the person, it's almost like the president walking in the room. You don't talk when the president walks in the room. I don't care who he is. It's the president. And if you do talk, you're going to have some others that, hey, excuse me, make room. Make room. You understand? This is what this is. It's an attitude of the heart. It's a respect. Whether you like the president or not, an attitude of the heart will show, you know. I still care about this country as a whole. You can't, we can't just get rid of you and just be done away with. Like if someone was to come and just take your life, it can't be that way. An attitude of the heart. He has the position. We still got to act as citizens. We're still U.S. citizens and we must apply. Appropriate ourselves accordingly, don't we? If the, if, if the, if the, I'm telling you right now, I didn't vote for this president. But if he was to show up, I would show him his honor. He's still president of the nation that I live in. I would still show him his honor. There he goes. Wow, look at him. Oh, I thought he was taller. You know? But still, <laughs> but still, I, 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 I would give him his position. You understand? No disrespect. If you can't do that with other people, you can't do it with the Father. Even if you think you can. Because it takes deep humility to worship the Lord because of who he is, the person. It's an attitude of the heart. Worship is also a reverent occupation with the creator. Man, let me say it again. A reverent occupation. It's your job with your creator to worship the Lord. I have been created to worship the Lord. That's why I was made. It's my number one job. It's the number one thing that the Lord even gave me breath. Why? So that breath can return back to him for who he is. Y'all know that scripture, right? I've been created to worship. Yo, that scripture. 
That's scripture. That's the reason why. Man, and we've lost it. We've turned it into committees and we've turned it into uh, groups and we've turned it into religious duties and we've turned it into uh, 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 cliques and factions. You're over here. You're over here. We worship in this way. Well, we do it this way. Well, we do it this way. And, and, and this is what we're going to do. And we dare not do it that way. That looks ridiculous. And the ones over here saying, well, y'all look ridiculous. You know, we've turned it into something else. We got to hit to the core of this thing. It's an attitude of the heart. It's my job to worship him. It's the beginning of an inner musing of the heart. Musing. A musing is an intimacy. A muse, a groan. An inner, an inner talk. An, an inner, an inner reverence. It's the beginning of learning how to internally Worship the Lord, making a melody in your heart. Amen. We make melody. There's in my heart. It takes time to get here. You can't just jump in. You can't just jump in. I mean, I could probably tell you just because I have experience now with this type of thing. I could probably tell you, hey, you're about here. You're still over here. Hey, you're getting close. You're getting real close because I see the attitude of the heart changing. You just might. And then some of you are like, well, you're right on the borderline. You're about to cross into this thing. You know what you understand? I could meet with everyone and I could tell you, give you your gauge. Why? Well, one is the simple response of what I see. That's number one. It's not everything. Just because I don't see a lifting of hands doesn't mean you ain't got it. There could be a very big internal thing going on. You understand? But it's an inner talk. It's an inner conversation. That's worship on the inside. I ain't worried about it on the outside. I'm not worried about what he did and what I did for him. It's a, it's, a, it's a musing on the inside that's connected with him. Number four, it's a depth of meditation. A deeper meditation. Thinking about it. Chewing it around a certain scripture. And then getting away from it. And then coming back to it. And then reading it again. And then talking to him about it. It's a meditation. That's worship. What are you saying? What does this mean? It's a depth of meditation. A depth of meditation upon the greatness and the worthiness of God. That's worship. To go farther. It's really not about you. Do you know that the Bible is not really about you? <laughs> Some of us have turned it to, you know, they call that something. They call it exegesis. They, there's, a, there's, a, there's a thing out there where you make the Bible about you. That's a thing. I'm David. Man, you ain't David. <laughs> well, I have the spirit of, okay, yeah, yeah, that's right. You got the Holy Spirit of David to make you whatever. But, but you don't, you don't want to put this thing where it's everything is about you. We couldn't do it. If anything, we're probably the Israelites that was around scared. Yeah, you got to take a low, you got you to you take a reality check. As much as I feel that I want to be David in that moment. <laughs> and those that can't even raise your voice in the middle of public, you think you could go out in the middle of everybody? You, you, come on. You know good and well, we'd all be back there like, my gosh, there he goes. The man of God. You know how I know that? Because David was a representation of Jesus. And ain't none of us did anything Jesus did. See, you're looking at things in a, from a biblical term. You ain't David. We were the people that couldn't do it. And we needed one, a champion, to go up there and handle a giant that none of us was ready to deal with. That's real Bible. I'm giving you real Bible right I'm not saying we're more than conquerors. Yes, we're more than conquerors. But don't let yourself get to the point where you're thinking you're David. No, David was a representation of Jesus Christ, man. 
This is what Jesus did. He gets all the glory. And we were sitting there looking scared. Is this going to work? And then pow. Ah! And all of a sudden, all the people, yeah, we're Israelites. We're Israelites. You know what I mean? You understand? That's us. Jesus is the one that did that. This is worship. Worship is understanding that concept right there. Oh, hallelujah. Please, somebody clap. Amen. I feel the Holy Spirit right now. <laughs> I hear the Lord saying, well, somebody finally said it. <laughs> somebody finally said it. This is the truth. Maybe we'll get into more of these kind of things. Amen. You understand that? We'll get into more of these kinds of things. Amen. We get the blessing of what these guys did. We walk in that stuff, but it wasn't us. No, man. We couldn't do it. We needed one. We needed the champion, the one. I want to show you something. John 4.24. Remember, this is just a continuation. I'm almost done here. John 4.24. This is what Jesus was talking about. I'm trying to give you a, a, I'm trying to speak to you so that you can start lowering yourself. Because there ain't no way you can praise and worship as long as you have a high view of yourself. Amen? But I'm not do, I, I want to do this in such a way where I'm not telling you, you're the cockroach. <laughs> I, re, I remember one pastor said, you, you're the flea on the dog. You know, it's like, oh, Lord, get this guy out of here. You know what I mean? I don't know this guy, he went too far. But I'm trying to use spiritual moments, spiritual words, so that we ourselves can bow down and say, you know what? That's true, pastor. I ain't no David. Man. I was one of the ones back there, man. Jesus was that. Amen? Jesus is looking for these kind of people. He's looking for these kind of people that know how to lower themselves and understand, man, nothing I did, nothing. Not even in them scriptures over there. If you're looking at the greats, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, they were all representations of Christ. We were the people that didn't know what we were doing. We were the ones that was complaining. That was us. Moses is a symbol of Christ. We're the ones over there complaining. Got manna, we didn't like manna. We were thirsty. This don't look like blessing, Moses. I'm going back. We need to go back over there. Yeah, we were slaves, but at least we ate. Do you understand? Well, really recognize where you're at. We got to. I have to. I certainly wasn't Christ himself. So if now I ain't Christ, that means I'm second. Second to none. <laughs> it's everything that he did. Jesus is looking for this kind. He said, God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit. Watch this. And in what? Truth. The reality. Truth is the reality. See, my worship deepens when I recognize these truths. Man, that wasn't me, never was going to be me. I think it was you, Dad, that told me, pulga del perro, right? Wasn't that somebody? Ni soy la pulga del perro. Somebody, and I ain't even the flea on the dog, you know? This pastor was saying something. It may have been, it may have been another pastor I was talking to. But what I'm saying is, there, you, 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 the truth of the matter I'm worshiping you with all confidence on what you did, but let no light turn to me. No, 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 no. Christ, man. You understand? Keep it there. The truth. See, that keeps a humility. But I'm going through this tough situation. Get the light off of you. Put it on him. David and Goliath was a tough situation. We couldn't do it. We had to send the champion in. You understand? He handled that. Let the champion handle those things. But who's going to pay this and who's going to let the champion handle those things? Keep yourself in spirit and in truth. The truth of the matter is you can't figure it out. Keep yourself in, 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 in this attitude. Let the champion work that out. I ain't no David and I ain't no Jesus Christ for sure. I can barely throw a rock to hit the street, you know. Much less get one right between the eyes of somebody. Now I can't do that. As much as I would love to think in my dreams, you know. 
you know, as much as I would love to, as much as I would love to think that I had something to do with Satan going down, and I'll even say, Satan, you lie, ha ha. But in the reality, I didn't do anything. It was Jesus that did that. So what do I do? I take a humble approach. Yeah, you defeated. I ain't gonna talk to you, but I'm gonna reverence the one. Oh, don't talk to me. You didn't do anything. Defeated the one, the one. See, God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. What does spirit mean? Let's talk about that one first before we get to the truth. When you worship him in spirit, it means you're worshiping him from your heart. If you're worried about raising your hands in front of people, you're nowhere near this right here. You ain't even got to this place. If you're still worrying about how you sound and what you look like, you haven't got here yet. And you know what? That's a hard place to be. Because I used to be there, man, continually. And it still wants to creep on me. Just to be honest with you. I was invited to do a funeral in front of a bunch of uh, uh, government employees. And do you know, I wanted to be very official. I was like, oh, Lord, let me not give them the hood of my You know, let me like, get all, yeah, I don't want to give them all that. They're going to think I'm crazy. They're going to think I'm crazy, man. They're going to reject me. They're going to realize we done got a crazy man in the, in the county. You understand? That was my flesh. That wasn't worshiping him in spirit, was it? I was too worried about what they were going to think. You know what I told myself? I sat in the truck. I said, you are of the lion of the tribe of Judah. Jesus already shot the devil between the eyes. I can come out of being scared now. You know? Well, I'm trying to bring a reality here. I don't have to hide behind the, enemy, the lions anymore. And what? Jesus did it. We can come out. Hey, guys. He won. I'm trying to give you a reality. Jesus won. You don't have to be scared anymore behind those lines waiting. He's down on the ground. We can come out now from being scared now and do the work of the Father. We can come out like little ants and do the work and start getting to work and, and not be afraid of what people think because Jesus already won. It's a done deal. This is worshiping him in spirit. I don't have to be concerned anymore. It can come from my heart because whatever was done, the hard part is done. It's already a done deal. Jesus did it. In spirit means from the heart. In spirit also means from our inner being, the inner, the inner man, the inside. The one you can't see, but you know is there. Greater is he living in that one. Worship from him. Worship from that point, from the inner depths of the heart. Look what Proverbs 20, 27 says. Well, it's good stuff, isn't it? Well, oh, man, it's good. I don't even know how we got here, but we're here, aren't we? This is a holy moment. I mean, we are, this is what you call the room of revelation right now. We're in, I can sense it. As a matter of fact, let's just honor the Father. Father, thank you for your revelation of the word, Lord. I can see it already changing everybody here, changing me, Father. Bringing down, bringing a lowliness of heart, lowliness of heart, Father. Let's not excel ourselves up higher than what we are. But it's you. You did it. You were the David. You were the Abraham. You were the Moses. You're the, you're the, you're the one, Father. You are the, 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 the representation of all those uh, uh, prophets and kings that did those magnificent things. It wasn't us. It, it was you. You, in Jesus' name, amen. Look what it says here, Proverbs twenty twenty seven. The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord, searching all the inward parts of the belly. That's worshiping in spirit. I mean, I'm, that's, that's worshiping in truth, I'm sorry. That's worshiping in truth, I'm sorry. This is when you allow the Lord to turn on the lighter. You ready? I'm ready. 
and you enter into that dark room of confession that you ain't never told nobody. You've never let anybody know about this. And the Lord's saying, you ready to visit that place? Worshiping in truth is when you say, Lord, I'm ready. I'm ready to visit that attack. I'm ready to visit that season where I lost my identity. I'm ready to visit that season where all of a sudden, and you could have been 9, 10, I don't know, where all of a sudden your view of yourself went terrible. You have to be able, when you worship in truth, spirit is one thing, coming from the inside, recognizing. But when you start to worship in truth, that's when you begin to allow the candle of the Lord to go, all right, let's go into that ugly room. We're going to start dealing with some of this. You know what I'm talking about? I know I got that room. I had, I had to, that room had some ugly, some things that I'm so ashamed of that I did that I would never mention them. There are some things that I've done, I'll never mention them. They'll never be a part of my testimony. Unless the Lord says one day, hey, you know that thing? You need to talk to them about that right there. You understand? But there's some things, y'all know what I'm talking about, those real shameful things. See, when you worship in truth, it's letting the candle of the Lord go in there and saying, Jesus, I know you see that. But my hands remain lifted to you. Oh, yeah, Lord. Yeah, yeah, that one too. But my hand remains lifted to the Lord. There's something about that. When you worship in spirit from your heart at the same time while Jesus is revealing the real you. While I'm sitting here praising the Lord, the spirit of the Lord is going in. Yeah, I know, Lord. I see that now. Yeah, I know. All remembering, you keep no record of wrong. Yeah, that's ugly. I know. Ooh, that was real ugly. I hate that I did that. But I stand here, you keep no record of wrong. You see what that does? You know what that's doing? It's humbling me. It's humbling me. And then he'll go uglier and go into the uglier areas. See, I allow him to. He'll go into the uglier areas like, oh. And that's when those, those are those ones that you just like, I can't even lift my hands right now. Oh, gosh. And you allow the Lord to heal those areas of ugliness. Amen. Those are those kinds of, it's no more about talking, is it? You just silence. Knowing the reality of what you're allowing him to visit. The reality of the hurts and the pains. Amen. And at the same time still trusting him. That in that ugly room there he knows what to do with all of that. That's worshiping in truth. <laughs> yeah, he, knows, he knows everything, right? No need to act like he don't. Man, he knows the ugly. Look what he said, John, John 14. And I will pray that the Father shall give you another comforter. And he may abide with you forever. Doesn't this scripture mean something so different right now? We've read this scripture over and over again. But do you see the reality do you see the strength when you put yourself down, get yourself out of the way, you recognize who you are, and then you look at this? Do you see the strength of it when you come in spirit with all your heart, but at the same time the candle of the Lord is searching the ugly room that nobody wants, and you're watching him, and you're like, 
in that moment, in that moment, this scripture should hit. You shouldn't feel shame. You should know that the Father is sending you a comforter. This is what the Holy Spirit does. He comforts me with all that yuck. Worshiping in spirit and in truth. It says, I will pray the Father and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. Even the spirit of what? See, see he, he's the spirit of truth. He's only the spirit of truth if you allow him into those black doors that no one ever has been to. It's, it's a beautiful moment. Some of you may be thinking, man, pastor's up there crying. He gets so emotional. Y'all don't know what's going on, man. I ain't emotional because of something I did. I ain't emotional because I failed him in something. You kidding me? I done left that, man. I, I'm more than a conqueror. When you see me get emotional, it's because I'm having a reality of who he is and who I am. I'm not David. Jesus was David. I was the goofy Israelite in the back. You understand? We all were. To think we're anything more than that is already going be beyond what praise and worship is. I wish I was. Oh, I've had thoughts of it. There's my head on David's body. That wasn't me. I was along with the rest. We cannot worship. When we worship, we can't worship in our flesh. We can't do it. Did you notice that everything, when we talk about worship, it had to do with getting rid of the flesh? You, you can't worship with the flesh. He said in spirit and in truth, not in flesh and truth. We have a lot of people that are worshiping in flesh because someone told them to lift hands, so they lift in hands. I want to try to get you to a place of humility where you yourself must lift hands. Because I ain't no David, I wasn't no Abraham. I was the goofy Israelite over there. Jesus was the David. Jesus was the Abraham. And I'm the one that can finally come out of hiding and say, man, my confidence is in him. See, no flesh in that. There's no flesh in that. No flesh. Colossians 3, 5. I have two more scriptures and I'm done. Watch this. Colossians 3, 5. Mortify, therefore, your members. I love that. Mortify. I'm going to let you look up that word. That's a cool word right there. Mortify your members, your bodily members. Mortify, therefore, your members which are upon the earth. Fornication, uncleanliness, inordinate affection. Inordinate affection. Wrong kind of affection. Evil concupiscence. That's always a hard word for me. Concupiscence. And covetousness, which is idolatry. It says, mortify those things. Get rid of all those things. You won't be able to hit worship. The only time a person cannot is when they're bringing those things up. If they're not in your life, then don't think about that no more. If they're in your life, remove them. So that when it comes time to come here together... You can lift those hands, recognizing that Jesus was the champion, not me. I didn't hit no giant between two eyes. I would have missed and ran back in. I'd have took the armor. The king would have said, here, take the armor. Yeah, put it all on me. Is there anything to cover right here, just in case? That would have been me. As much as I would love to think I'm that and a bag of chips. Oh, as much as I would love to think I'm all that. I wouldn't have did it. I mean, if you, if you, if you can't shout a hallelujah in church, you think you're going to go up in the middle of all your nation and speak something for God. 
No. You got to have a humble view of you before God can use you like that. Colossians 3, 16 and 17. I'm trying to bring you to worship. This is worship. Same chapter, Colossians 3, 16 and 17. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another. Watch this. In psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Take yourself to a place where a new song will come out of you that's never been written before. You understand? One that has, somebody has a pre-written already and has already the stanzas in the verse, in verse 1, verse 2. There are songs living in you that the Lord wants to pour out of you. Amen? Only you can do. Not Pastor, not Pastor Tim, not Pastor Nina, not none of us, no elder. You got songs in you. And they got to come out of you if you want to be a true worshiper that Jesus is looking for. A low state but a high reverence for what he's done. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord, verse 17. And whatsoever you do in word or deed, whatever you do in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father. By who? See what I'm saying? Because we couldn't do this without him, could we? I want you all to stand up. I don't know about you, but I have a new reverence for Jesus. I believe the Lord really showed me something here. Did he show you something here? Did you feel yourself come down a couple of notches? That's good. As much as we would love to be David. David was a symbol of Christ. We were the ones shaking in the back. But the good news is, is that Jesus did what he did. How David handled Goliath. Jesus handled the enemy. And all of Israel didn't stay back after that happened. It says they chased the enemy back. Gained the ground for the Lord. They chased them back, back and pushed them back because of the fear. Do you understand? Why? Because our champion did what he did. Oh, the champion. The champion. So now, now that he's done what you did, you can remove every spirit of fear off of you. Just like the Israelites did. They can come out of hiding now. Come out of hiding. We can come out of hiding, y'all. See, I, I, if anything, maybe me and Nina would have been maybe a little uh, a small uh, captain over a few, you know? Like, Woo, he did it. Come on, guys. Hey, he did it. He did it. He did it. If anything, that's what we are. Amen. And that's what you should be. Because then they would turn around. He did it. He did it. He finished it. We don't have to be in hiding no more. We don't have to worry about what we look like, what we sound like. That spirit of fear, you can just forget about it now because he did what he needed to do. Now we can act bold and strong because of what he did. And all we got to do is start pushing back, pushing back, pushing back, pushing back on the enemy in our lives. Amen? Amen. Pushing back, rescuing the people that we can do. Everything that he did. Everything that he did. It's all that what he did. My confidence is, is what he did. He finished it. Hallelujah. Let me tell you what he did. This is what he did for me. He can do it for you. I didn't have nothing to do with this. But he had everything to do with it. And he can do it for you too. It's our confidence. It's our boldness. I don't have to worry about how great Timothy is. He died on the cross already. It's the greatness, my champion, that he went and he took down that enemy in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. That's my confidence. And because of that, 
I talk about him. I say he's awesome. He's worthy. I praise him. I talk well about him. And then I move into deeper seasons, deeper worship, where I begin to just recognize the person. And the person stands before me. And I can't even look at him. Man, whenever the presence of the Lord really shows up, I don't look up. I don't know about y'all. Can't. I can't. I can sense the Lord. My eyes come down. Like, Lord, if you want me to look at you, you're going to have to tangibly pick me up because, uh, you know, I was scared. I wasn't a David at all. And, and you see, he'll lift that head and, and you'll still, you'll still be like, don't live, please don't look at me, you know. And he'll say, man, hey, man, look at me, look at your, look at your daddy. You see that shape, and, and you look, and you, and you'll see them eyes look at you, and he's so pleased with you. He knows, he knows, he remembers that we're from the dust. He knows that, he knows. But yet he's like, come here, that was my job. Now you do yours. Let's just praise him, praise him, praise him, praise him. Just praise him. Put a low view of yourself and a high view of Christ. Just praise him, praise him, praise him. Oh, Abba Father. Just praise him for who he is. Just praise him for who he is. Just who he is. <laughs> oh, it's your strength, Lord. It was your strength. <laughs> Forgive me that I put a high mind of myself, Lord. Forgive me that I, I thought too high of myself, Lord. I ain't all that, man. <laughs> it was you. You. Only you. It all points to you. Let all the elders surround the Lamb of God. And let's say all those that worship and all that believe Him, they surround, they, they, they encompass around the one, the one true king. Nobody gets the glory but the one. Amen. Oh, I thank God if I get a couple of treasures out of it. I thank God that he lets me to have a couple of treasures out of it. Amen. But oh, no, no, nowhere will I ever put myself up to an equivalency. No, no, no. I have his promises. I have his spirit. But I'll always honor the first. The first always gets the reward first. Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Just about 30 seconds more. Just Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. <sighs> Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Father. Again, we're changing. We are deepening. We're going past the beginning stages of a relationship where things are all gung-ho and glory. But then there comes a time in a relationship where all you got is commitment. The butterflies of salvation may not be so present anymore. But you get to graduate into something that's much more deeper than just being happy that you're saved. You transfer into over something called commitment. I don't have to feel good to be committed to Jesus. I don't have to be all butterflied up in my cell. I don't have to be crying every day in, in humility. I don't have to do all that anymore. It doesn't have to be there anymore. It comes down to a place where I'm committing myself. Whether I feel good or not, we're in that relationship. 
We are now 20 years in where all the looks, it's like the, the marriage. We've, we're, we're older now. We're not the young ones that we were, are we? We're older now. And it's not about what you see anymore, but it's about how committed you were when you first gave your vows. You understand? You made vows with Jesus. You made vows with him in holy matrimony. And who cares if you don't feel a certain way or you don't see something? You made a vow. You made a vow. And so you stay holy committed. Holy committed. Holy committed. In spirit and in truth. In spirit and in truth. From my heart, Lord, recognizing the real man that I am. In truth. Amen. In Jesus' name. And they all say. <laughs> Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah.